to using Creo. What we're going to do today is work on some of this geometry. Again, we're roughing out what the Virgin Folio clock will be like. And then after that, we can start modifying some of the geometry as we need it. First thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to start cleaning up some of this, uh, I don't know, messy stuff on the side. We don't necessarily need. Some people might question whether you'd want to have some of that sketch information. Well, you can get that sketch information quite quickly um, if you really need to. And I'm going to need the back of this guy here, and I want that as sort of construction geometry for the main gear that we're about to build. Now you can project the geometry so you can get all the lines hard like you want there. Um, but in this case, I just want to have the construction geometry, so I'm going to select that back. Now, if I hide out some of these, you'll notice that I've got that construction geometry that I need very quickly. The other thing that I've been kind of taking a look at is with this stuff, it's kind of boring looking at it the way it is. And you might want to add a little bit of color to this. So let's say we take the escapement. You can right click on it. And when you come down here to the very bottom, you can't quite see it because it's off the screen. It says part properties. Let's see if we can do that with the crown. There we go. Part properties just at the very bottom. When you do that, you have you can change the names, the appearance, and a whole bunch of stuff. And let's just change some of this stuff around so that uh, it looks a little better the way it is. Now, instead of escaping out of this and then going into the escapement, how about I just double click on this? You'll notice that I've gone straight into the escapement and I can come in and start changing the colors. At that point, I can start giving myself a little more reference information as far as visual information goes, just by coloring the parts and knowing what belongs to what and nothing seems to blend together. At any rate, don't really need to see any of this stuff. I want to be able to just take a quick look at the, the back of this guy. And then we're going to create the main gear. Now the main gear is going to be at a bit of an angle off of this as far as the, the axis goes. Because we're going to be dropping pendulum weights to come down off of it. And I don't want it to interfere with this gear. Um, the ones that I have seen have the pendulum weights and everything coming off of this guy. Everything's linear coming vertically. Um, I don't know. I sometimes like to put things up a little different. And this is one of those nice things about this, this software is that you don't necessarily have to uh, come in and give it exactly what you need um, right at the very beginning. If later I want to change it and move that gear to completely uh, vertical from this one, it shouldn't be much of a problem at all. So what I'm going to do to start with is, is that I want to create a um, some construction geometry and I want to do it, say, using three points of or a three point circle. Now you'll notice that as I put my mouse over this, there's really nothing going on. But if I hit the space bar, you know what? This is something that works better with the main circle. So when I come up to here and I hold down the shift, you'll notice the tangent uh, symbol there up beside the cursor. And that isn't necessarily what I want. So you can hit the space bar and come in here and turn that off if you really need to. So that's one thing you can do. Um, again, it all depends on what you're trying to achieve and whether you want to have those tangencies or not. I just wanted to grab three points on those, those circles there. So I get myself that main geometry that I need. And then I'm just going to offset this so that I have a radius of 12. And hit escape. And I'm going to click on it one more time and convert that into construction geometry that I can use. I always also like adding um, some of this information here. It comes in very handy like a bisector or a cross. Because when you're trying to select stuff, having some of this construction geometry like this cross is really simple. Sometimes it's hard to select the center of the circle. It's real easy to hit that intersection. And... What I'm going to do from here is I'm going to create another line, but I want it to be at a bit of an angle. I'm thinking about 72 degrees, I'm thinking. Something like that. There we go. So now that's at 72 degrees, what we're going to do is I'm going to create a line. Now, the line I'm going to be using here is I want the... Um, the main gear actually to come up and just the edge of it to be right there. So I'm going to hold down shift. I'm going to grab that point, that intersection. And now I want the line to be a certain length because I'm going to use this as the radius for the new circle that I'm going to make for the gear. What I'm going to do in this case is I'm going to hit the space bar and you'll notice that right here it allows me to set the length. So in this case I want uh, 72.5 and you'll notice now I can't vary the length of the line, but I can vary where it is. And I'm just going to lay it down right there. 
So now we have that. Let's just zoom out a little bit. And I'm going to create another circle just based off of that endpoint and right here. So now I've got the outside diameter that I need for that. In this case, I can come in here and delete some of the geometry out. I'm going to take this guy and I'm going to change him into construction geometry because I think it'll be kind of handy to have that centerpiece there. And in the meantime, we're just going to rough out the rest of the gear. Let's go for what I figure the hub might be and that outer periphery for the rim. And at this point, let's create some spokes for this. Um, again, very simple. I'm not really being concerned about making sure that endpoints are hitting any certain specific spots. I don't know why I hit that one button. I want to go into spline. And we'll go like this. See if we can rough out something similar to what we have on that other gear. Whoops. Never fails that you hit escape when you shouldn't. But that is just part of being a CAD guy. So, now I'm not really happy with this the way it is. Um, and part of the reason why is, is again, I'm going to put in some construction geometry. We're going to put in a cross, place it in the center. And I'm going to be making this, this spoke here. Um, looks like it'll be not exactly where I want it to be. So I'm just going to move it. I'm going to grab this guy and move him. Zoom in a little bit so we have a little more fine control. We'll come into about there. That looks pretty good. Now at this point, we'll do a mirror. I want to mirror that element. And we want a vertical mirror. And I can come in and grab some of that geometry like that center. Yeah, that looks pretty good for now. It's going to be a little bit of a different spoke compared to the other one. But, you know, with anything, everything changes a little bit. So, again... We want to come in here, let's do a quick pattern. We want it to be a circular pattern. The elements, I'm going to hold down shift and select the two elements that I want. And hit the middle mouse button to get them defined. The center of this guy is going to be right there. Radial direction, you do have to select something. Generally I'll just come in and double click somewhere on some geometry just to define it. Now the angle what I want to have here is, let's say, five spokes. So with five spokes, I'm going to need 72 degrees between them. Radially, I don't need any more. Angularly, I want to have five. And we'll hit that, and we're okay. And it, it grabbed that center line, too. Yeah, it doesn't hurt us any to have all, any of that. So there we go. Now we've got the, the sketch that we can start creating the uh, main gear off of. So now we have this geometry. We can do a quick pull. We've got that. Uh, let's grab some of the other parts of the profile that we want to have. So what we do for that is that we hit the space bar and we can add some more profiles that we want to add. Like these. We'll hit the middle mouse button and we're good to go. The distance we want to do is 10. I'm just going to type that in. The draft angle is not that important and we'll hit OK. So now we've got that all set up. And yet Notice that it looks pretty good, but it's red. So what that's telling me is, is that I've created another part based off of the crown. Now, that is mainly because the geometry of the actual solid body doesn't hit there. I would have been wiser to have come in and created a new part. But what I can do in this case is, is that I can just come in and rename it and call it the main gear. And we're good to go. I think at the same time, we should probably give it a better color. So we'll go for green. We'll close that guy out. And we'll hide this and let's just take a look at what we have for some of the other geometry now. So you're probably thinking, well, you know, this is great. You've got that gear, but there is no teeth on it. And you're absolutely right. So, and what we're going to need here is a 10 to 1. So I'm going to have 6 here and 60 on this guy. So what I'm going to do here is just um, how this one is made is quite simple but I'm just so we can demonstrate how this is all going to work properly we're going to come in here grab the crown we're going to make him the active part I'm going to create a sketch and I'm going to hold down shift so I can grab that center and we're going to come in here and radius 11 should be good and the reason why we can't see anything was is because I didn't have that sketch uh, shown 
So again, this is one of those things where I kind of jumped in and, and wasn't really thinking I probably should have created a new plane and I don't really need any of this anymore. So I'm just going to delete this guy out. I'm going to grab that guy and we'll do the circle again very quickly. We'll make that radius 11. And again, I want to have that as construction geometry and we're going to create some circles here. Some small circles is based off of this guy here. And these are just small, say two millimeter diameter sticks. And we want to have six of them around the outside. So what I'm going to do with this one here is that again, we're going to do a sketch pattern. See, now this is a good example of why you want to have that construction geometry of that X in there, because right now, I'm finding it difficult to grab any geometry to define as the center. So in this case, we're going to have an infinite cross section, which then allows me to go to the center. Now, when I come in and try to do a pattern and I grab that element, we want it to be circular. If we go to the center and the center will snap right to that one guy, which makes life quite a bit easier. And the radial direction, again, you, you have to select something. So I just come in and sort of double tap that angle so we've got um, six at 60 degrees we only want one radially angularly we want six and we're gonna say okay and we got those pins now we're just gonna double check to make sure the crown is the active one and you can tell it's the active one by the green outline instead of the black outline so I'm gonna trust that we're gonna do a quick pull and we're gonna pull out these guys here it's sort of inconsequential how far we'll make these, but we'll just keep a nice round number and say 50. So that's going to give us the little shafts that we need uh, that we're going to engage with a very simple gear, simple uh, gear system here. So the next thing that we're going to do is create uh, the gear teeth for this for this guy here. Now, one of the things that I've found in the past is is that while I was trying to create some gears, is that you can come in here, you can draw a profile and be within this main gear and create the profile. And just like in some of the previous uh, episodes, you come in, you uh, create a feature set based off of um, a boss and then you try to do a circular pattern. It doesn't always work all that well. So generally what I will do is a little bit of a workaround, but what I'll do is I'll create a bunch of little parts like the uh, gear teeth. I'll do a pattern of them and then I'm going to use the boolean merge just like we did with the uh, with the escapement here. So first thing is we don't really need to see the escapement. I would like just so that I can have things lined up and visually making sense to me. I'm going to come down here so that I can keep some of this geometry there. Um, but we are working in the main gear, but we do want a new part. So what I'm going to do is create a new part and I'm just going to call it tooth. And then we're going to double check and make sure that it is active. And I'm going to select this guy here. Now remember before, you can select on this and start drawing, but what it will do is almost immediately put you into that main gear. Um, so what I'm going to do in this case is project construction geometry on that again. And then I can hide this main gear so it's not confusing me too much, but I still got the geometry that I need. Again, start adding some of the other stuff, like the geometry you can use, such as a crosshair to the center of this guy just like that so what we need to do is establish the angle at which we want the the gears to show up so we got 60 teeth for this so um, they're gonna have to be within six degrees and how we can do that is that you can come in here and you can do this guy right here which is the angle sector and I'm gonna hold down shift and I'm gonna give it the geometry where we're going to start so that's the main line there and now what i can do is i can come in and zoom and say you know what the angle bisector so this is going to be in between so i want this to be six degrees and it's going to give me the three degrees in between and i'm going to redo that as well just one more time here and come up and i can do the six uh there as well but alternately, I can also come up and use that line there. So let's just try that one more time. 
I'm going to grab this line and I want it to be 6 degrees so that means that I'll have to come out to 12 and we've got basically where we need the geometry for that for that tooth to be so we can just basically start drawing some lines um, based off of this holding down shift I can grab the grab the geometry we need there and there and we'll come straight across here so we have a triangle now I'm not too sure if that's going to be about the right uh, height but we can quickly take a look down here Oops. And I might want to make that a little taller. So what I'm going to do here is come up here. I'm going to grab this point and hopefully it will allow me to start moving some of this stuff around. There we go. So we can pull that up a little higher. Let's make that to three. That looks pretty good. Now, what I want to be able to do from this is, let's just show the, not the escapement, the main gear. I'm going to have to pull this tooth across so that it is in there. Now, remember that we've got to make sure that we're right here and that this is the active part that we're working on. And we're just going to do a pull. I'm going to do it in reverse. And I know that this is 10. I see that that doesn't quite match up with this guy here. So we can probably just grab this face and let's just pull it out so that it matches to the end of this tooth face. Now what I'm doing here is I'm holding down shift and grabbing some geometry like that tooth face and that gives me what I need. So now we have everything so it matches up nicely. Now what I want to do is test something to make sure that I can get what I need done done. So first thing is I'm just going to escape out of this and we're going to hide these two planes and we're going to use the boolean and the blank, we can come up here and we can change that. We want that to be the main gear. And one of the tools we want to use is this. We don't want to keep the tool. So we do that. And you'll notice that it merged immediately right within that gear. So I'm just going to hit Control Z just to back out of there. Now what I'm going to do is I just wanted to make sure that this would join up with this circle. You'll notice that the line I made there should come in and bisect the, um, the circumference of this. But it, it's always good to do a quick little test. So at this point, let's do a pattern. And how we do that is we come over here into structure, I believe, and we can go, not here. We want to make a copy. Here we go. Come down here and we can do a radial share and copy. So what I'm going to do here is that we can have it so it's shared. Base name is tooth. Uh, the owner, the number we need will be 60. The axis that we're going to need is basically this guy right here, so you can see that selecting that face will work. And the angle that we need in between these is 6. And I'm going to cross my fingers that when I do that, it comes out and it comes out perfect. Now, some people might end up getting an error saying you can't have this many uh, parts within, a, uh, within an assembly. And it is true, but we can start merging some of these guys together. And once we've done that, we won't have so many parts that we won't be able to, to save this. So what I'm going to do here real quickly is I'm going to rotate this around and take a quick look and see if this is going to work. Now I can see immediately that I'm going to have to take the uh, these dowels and move them in a little bit, but I think that we can make this work with the teeth uh, the way they are. So that all being said, we're going to have to start merging some of this stuff together. So let's get back into the modeling. Now what I want to do is create the main gear. I want to make that as the active part. And at this point, we want to do a boolean for the main gear, the tools. We don't want to keep the tools, but we want to add these guys. Now one thing you can do is that that will just add that one tooth. But if I come in here and I hold down shift while I'm selecting, it will let me select multiple teeth to make sure that I've got everything joining in properly. So you'll notice that those have joined in on the gear. So what we're going to do here real quickly is I'm going to come through and select all these teeth, get them in on that one part, and then we'll have the, the main gear done.
Okay, there we go. So now you can see that we've got the main gear worked out. And we still have that one tooth shown there, but we can delete him out now that we have him. Have them all set up onto this main gear. So there we go. We've got the crown, the escapement, and the main gear roughed out here. Uh, let's just uh, make this the uh, active one so we can see the outline of this gear. And you can see how you can create it reasonably quickly. Now, we, again, a lot of this stuff, what we're doing right now is that we're roughing things out so that in the end we can start moving some of this stuff around as we need to. Uh, one of the things I see right away is that this pendulum I'm going to have to move up higher than the uh, the main gear. And the main gear, we're probably going to have to add some geometry to it that will be correct. And then we're also going to have to move some of these pins in. And when we move these pins in, maybe we'll be able to increase their diameter a little bit so that this will work a little better. But in the meantime, hopefully this has helped you in your quest to learn how to use Creo Elements Direct Modeling Express. And I will talk with you guys next week. Oh,